Okay, everybody, here is the study guide, study review for week four. This uh, module, we talk media, we talk about the Electoral College, and World War II, and the Great Depression. Um, you can go ahead and, and just don't worry about the chronolog chronology of this, because obviously the Great Depression happened before World War II. But taking a look at the media, think about the issues that go get more media coverage. Uh, those are ones that the elites probably want us to have. Um, whether it's a policy issue right now, guns is a big thing. Um, the the capital hearings is a big thing. So the so the media is really paying attention to those. And the elites that run the media, job is to socialize us and teach the masses elite preferences and values. So we hear about what the masses want, and they try to influence us. Um, in all of this, when we talk about what the function of the media is, tied uh, tied into how uh, we are. Looking at the system of politics here, so the function of mass media is do is to socialize us to you know for them to interpret news for us and also to set the agenda to let us know what they think is most important. Um, and probably out of those three, the most important thing that they have is agenda setting. That's where they decide what um, issues and alternatives might be out there for policies that are being put into an effect you know we do like uh sensationalized news that's just something that we 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 are as part of of um our society and uh tmz is one of the news coverages that that news coverage sites out there that really provides sensationalistic type of news but one of the bad things about sensationalism in news is that it obscures other issues you know when we talk about uh, sex stories or, or sex lives of candidates. Um, when the media is kind of called out for using or reporting on sex scandals of a politician, a lot of a lot of their excuse is that um, it's put into place so we can judge the character of a person. Now, it might be a big deal to somebody. It might not be a big deal, but it's kind of a, a kind of a subjective way of of analyzing a person's character. Um, Julian Assange is supposedly supposed to be extradited to the United States uh, pretty soon, uh, help run WikiLeaks. Um, but, you know, we had a lot of military secrets that were posted. Um, if we want to have a, or get the ability so uh, the, the government secrets are not leaked, um, you got to keep the secret information away from the press. So that's something as, as, as simple as that. Um, the Sullivan Rule, you know, remember the Sullivan Rule makes it very difficult for plaintiffs to sue. The Sullivan Rule is put into place that um, if if you are libeled or 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 um, uh, libeled or slandered by another individual, it's really hard on your part to prove that there was damage to your reputation. Uh, there has to be a reckless disregard for the truth, and it has to be malice. Um, so, out of all of this, it's easier to broadcast false information about people. Uh, you can avoid being sued, and you can pretty much say whatever you want. We'll talk a little bit more about the limitations of speech down the line. Um, but, when, with you know, talking as part of the media, remember the media is going to be the link between the candidate and the voter. Okay, know about the Electoral College. You know, know how the Electoral College votes are determined. Remember... We have 538 votes available. Um, the, the number of electoral college votes are determined by the amount of House of Representatives in that state plus two. So here in California, we have, uh, as of now, it's going to go down. But as of now, we have 53 representatives plus two senators. So California has 55 electoral college votes. In total, there are 538 uh, votes available to the electoral college. Um, one of the problems with this is the numbers even. So there's a very poss real, uh, very slim chance that the Electoral College would ever be a tie because half of 538 is 269. I don't anticipate there ever being a 269-269 split in, in the Electoral College, but it is possible. Know about Maine and Nebraska and how the state winner receives two electoral college votes and the winners of each congressional district receive one. Go ahead and take a look at the map by doing the map under 538. 
dot com or uh, two seventy to win dot com. It's pretty easy to manipulate the the electoral college votes. Um, a faithless elector is where somebody is chosen to be an elector for the electoral college, and you do not vote according to what the popular vote is. So, say for example, I'm um, a Democratic elector here in California. Um, it's possible that, say, Biden won the won California, won the popular vote, so I would have to vote for Biden. A faceless elector would be someone that would cast their vote for Trump. All right, so that's kind of what we're talking about. Some states have uh, laws that prevent this, and uh, we talked about that in the video. And California is one of those states that has a law requiring electors to vote for the candidate that wins the popular vote. And going to look at, you know, kind of the closest election in the past 30 years, it was Bush versus Gore. That CNN documentary that I posted is really fascinating. And I remember all of that stuff like it was yesterday. Um, you know, uh, you thought this presidential, past presidential election was a little crazy. This Bush-Gore one was probably more crazy, in my opinion. Uh, not as contentious. You know, certainly there were some hard feelings on both sides. But... Um, it was a crazy time. Know about the Great Depression and what started the Great Depression, the stock market crashing of 1929. And we had year-long droughts that uh, that evolved into what was called the Dust Bowl, where crops were, ki were killed, um, uh, livestock died. Uh, there was a year-long drought, so it, it evolved into something called the Dust Bowl. Uh Know about the Cold War? We're actually going to look at the Cold War more in the next week. Uh, the Cold War originated af uh, originally originated immediately after World War II in the Warsaw Pact. Um, half of Europe was uh, ceded to the communists and half of Europe on the west side was ceded to more democratic countries. And we're going to kind of see that Cold War evolve uh, into a Red Scare and then some of the situations that takes us into Korea, then takes us into Vietnam. Uh, and Winston Churchill referred to the spread of communism as an iron curtain. And that's where that, you know, a lot of you might be uh, too young to remember uh, the separation of Germany and the barrier between West Germany and East, uh, uh, East Germany was called the Iron Curtain. It was a physical wall, but it wasn't iron. But they kind of used Iron Curtain as a kind of a, 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 a metaphor for that. Know what the Marshall Plan is? And know that in uh, when we kind of get into World War II, uh, isolation in World War II, uh, in 1937, approximately 94% of the population didn't want to get involved in World War II. And, you know, uh, we had something called the Ludlow Amendment, and this was something that's very interesting. Uh, the Ludlow Amendment sought for a constitutional amendment that made a national referendum where citizens would vote on a declaration of war. Right now, if we declare war, Congress would have to be the ones to do it. And it hasn't happened since 1941. But Ludlow sought to create a national referendum where if there was a, a, a commitment to get into a war or declaration of the war, we as citizens would be the ones to vote on it. It didn't pass, um, and I'm not quite sure if it would have been a good idea if it passed. Um, I don't know if a lot of us were, would have been uh, uh, knowledgeable enough to make a decision that monumentous, all right? Monumental. Uh, know why uh, the factors that led to Pearl Harbor? Um, uh, probably the ultimate factor was the Dutch governor of the West Indies cutting off oil supply to Japan. Uh, there was a peace summit that didn't work. Um, uh, and the United States kind of also thought that everything was fine. Know about the Battle of Normandy? That's a D-Day where uh, we saw a lot of casualties on Omaha Beach, uh, the Battle of Normandy. Uh, FDR's Lend-Lease program where uh, he loaned money to, uh, to anybody fighting off uh, the Nazi party in Europe. So it was pretty much determined that the United States was on the side of the Allies. Um, remember in World War II, we saw people voluntarily enlist and also drafted personnel. About 60% of the military was volunteer, 40% was drafted. And then out of all that, we kind of see the evolution of women coming out of the work, uh, out of the home and going into the workplace to help, uh, 
uh, replaced men that were sent off to war. We're going to see how feelings change to, toward war as we evolve throughout the 20th century. Um, the Holocaust, and one of the things that was kind of disturbing about the Holocaust was uh, there's been secret documents that the United Nations or the League of Nations at that time might have been aware of the Holocaust all the way back to 1942. The official discovery of those camps is around 1945, but there's documentation that is out there that shows that the, the UN or the League of Nations might have, been, might have known about these camps in 1942 and really did nothing about it. Um, know about the Battle of Iwo Jima. This was in the Pacific Theater. Uh, this was the battle that my actually my grandfather was at, where we see those four Marines raising flag a flag. Um, the Battle of Guadalcanal, um, the events with the USS Panay that got uh, us closer to war and Hitler and his path toward power. Uh, remember, Hitler was a very influential person in Germany. Uh, had that cult of personality where people followed him, um, and you know, kind of looking at everything. Uh, Germany was still, you know, feeling the effects of World War One, and the Great Depression not only affected the United States, it also affected countries throughout the world. So, uh, you know, Germany had a bad economic depression as well. Um, Hitler came and promised a lot and blamed a lot of the things on members of the Jewish faith, uh, which kind of demonized them. So it's kind of how he took power, right? So... Uh, also kind of know where he, what countries he annexed, like Hitler going into Poland and other countries out there. Okay, so that's all I got for this. Like I said, this video is going to cover uh, the media, Electoral College, World War II, and the Great Depression. Okay, thanks a lot.